Okay, in our last video, we built this modal that kind of sucks. Uh, it works, but let's do some keyboard navigation. I'm pressing tab right now. If I press enter and open, you'll see the focus is nowhere in the modal um, on the actual page. But if we can get into the modal like this, uh, if I press escape, nothing happens. Escape should close the modal out. And then, but if I do press enter on the X, that does close it. And when we close it, we want the user's focus to shift back to this open modal button. Whereas here, it just resets you back to the top of the page. So we will go ahead and fix all these with some custom code. Now, a lot of the guide um, is from this Webflow accessibility document on making the uh, these things keyboard navigable. They also offer just code to do it in jQuery right here. But I went ahead and wrote it in vanilla JavaScript and made some of my own changes based on what I read in the uh, Chrome developer forums as well. So we'll go ahead and get to that. Let me hop into the project here. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to delete interactions first for the button because we're going to do this all with some custom code. And then I also have interactions on the close elements, which is this modal background and the close button, which is this link block here. OK. And I've got a code sandbox linked up here in the uh, before closing body tag. So let's go ahead and get into some code. First thing we're going to do is we're going to find some key codes. Uh, this is just a JavaScript object that says if we press the escape key, we're looking for key code 27. Tab key is key code 9. OK, so I have a website that you can actually get these really easily. If I come here and press escape, we see we get 27. Tab, we get 9. And then what was the other one we want? Not shift. Uh, we will look for shift, but return is E13. So that's where I'm getting that from. Let's keep moving. So first, we're going to want to select the button on our page with an ID of button or BTN. We're going to want to get the modal element with an ID of modal. Uh, so actually, before we do this, let's go ahead and add those to our project. So button, we're going to add an ID of BTN. This is the button we want to do. And on our modal, we're going to have the ID of modal, just like that. Go ahead and publish so that we know we can select those. And now focusable elements, this is a string. This is everything that could be focusable, like um, when you press tab, that, that is focused. So we have button, that makes sense. This um, href wrapped in brackets, this gets us a tags or anchor tags. Inputs, any form inputs, select, that's a kind of input. Text area, also a kind of input. And then anything where the tab index is not negative 1. And tab index of negative 1 essentially makes something that might be natively uh, tabbable, not tabbable. And we see Webflow talk about this too with the modal close area. They set a tab index of negative 1. Mine doesn't have a close area on it, but um, well, that's just kind of showing you where you could be using it. Uh, and then closers, this is anything that I want to be able to close the modal because I want two things to close the modal, that X at the top right and the modal, modal background itself. So we're going to add this uh, HTML data attribute of WB data equals close. So let's go ahead and do that now. Uh, so on modal background, custom attribute, WB data equals close. And then let me check the zoom here real quick. Yeah, 110 is kind of the max my browser can handle right now. And then on the link block, this is the one we want. Yep, we're going to add a custom, we'll say WB data is close. All right, and publish that again so that we have access to those on the live site. Let's keep moving. We're going to define a variable called previous active element. We're not going to actually set it to anything right now, so it will be null. But once we say we click the button, we want to set that button to our previous active element. So that's going to be in this open modal function that we'll make here in a second. So I have, we're going to listen for the click event on the button, and that's going to call this function open modal. So let's go ahead and define that. We've got a function open modal. Now, since we have open modal, we're also going to want closed modal. And then just to make things easier, we're going to have another helper function called key pressed. And key pressed is going to be a function that essentially does something when the user presses a key like tab or uh, return or escape. And I'm passing focusable content here. Um, it gets E, which is an event, and then focusable content, which we'll define in these other functions. So previous active element equals document.activeElement. This is referring to what I was talking about here when we click the button, it becomes the active element, and we're going to set that to previous active element. And that's going to uh, come up later in closed modal there. Now we're going to define this variable called focusable content. 
And to do that, we're going to query the modal for all these focusable elements. Now, remember, focusable elements was this string right here. So this is going to give us a node list of all of everything within that modal. In, in our case, everything in that modal, actually, let's go to the live site and I'll refresh. Oh, it doesn't work because we got rid of the interactions. So that's OK. We'll go back to modal here, set it. Everything that we want to be focusable will be this link block here both of these form fields, and then the submit button. So we should expect a node list of four things. Now I'm going to get the modal.class list, and we're going to add this class of is open. And so let's define that right now. So we have the modal, and right now it is flexed. Let's go ahead and hide that. And we'll add a combo class called is open, and we'll make it flex. And that's really all we have to do for that. So we'll go ahead and save and publish and now this should actually work to open the modal i'm going to go ahead and save this and let's get the what's the other thing i want to do oh i want to just console log these focusable elements for you so you can see what that looks like go ahead and paste that there and let's refresh and now when we click our modal opens uh, we got some errors from our svgs just ignore those but let's look at this object Focusable content, node list, four items, and it's all these four items. So that is behaving as expected, which is great. Let's continue with our code. We're going to, uh, da, 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 let's get rid of that. We don't want to console log anymore. And now we're going to listen for the key down. So when I'm when the modal is open, we want to add an event listener to the document for when the user presses a key. And to that, we're going to pass this function that uh, receives an event and it's going to call key press, which is our function down here. And it's going to pass focusable content as well. So let's start defining this function. The first thing we want to do is when we press escape, we want to be able to close the modal. So we're checking for the event key code. If that equals key codes dot escape, which remember was defined up here, then we're going to call this function close modal, which doesn't do anything yet, but that's okay. Next, we're going to say, if the key code is not tab, really, if the user doesn't press escape, all we care about is tab. The user can press any other button. But if it's not escape, then we're just going to go ahead and, uh, sorry, if it's not tab, then we're just going to go ahead and return and do nothing. So now that we know that the user has pressed the tab key at this point, we're going to do some stuff with that. Now, the user may be holding shift or they might not. So we'll do an if else block to uh, check on this, to check if the user is holding shift or not. And shift just makes the user tab in reverse. So first, if the user is holding shift, we're gonna and we're on the uh, first focusable element, which would be that close button. We want to reverse to the submit button or the last focusable element. So we'll check if the active element is uh, the first one in this fo focusable content node list. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna focus. We're gonna change. Um, we're gonna call this focus function on the last element in the focusable content node list. And the the way we get that is just by calling focusable focusable content dot length minus one. And then we're going to prevent the default um, action from happening as well. And similarly, we're going to go to the first focusable element if we're focused on the last one and the user presses tab, not shift tab. So this is just same code, but in the different direction. So we're checking if the, if the active element is the last one, then we want to call this focus function on the uh, first element within that modal. All right. And now what we want to do is we want to make sure that um, we have this closers. Remember, we define this query selector all, anything with this data attribute of close, so the X button or the background. We want to run a quick for each loop. And for each, for each item in that closers node list, we're going to add an event listener for that too, that when the user clicks that, it closes the modal. And the click also, luckily for us, when you press your turn, that functions as a click too. Um, I'm trying to see if there's anything else I want to say about that. Just a quick note that we're back in the open modal here. We defined everything we want for the key pressed function and that event listener, but we want to make sure we define event listeners for closing out as well. And then last thing we're going to do is we're going to focus on the first thing within the modal. Now for our modal example, again, the first thing is going to be that close button. Let's uh, bring this up, which is the first one. If you were, if this was on a live site, you might want to focus the user on this name field, which would be, you know, just put instead of a zero in those brackets, put the number one. But I'm going to change it to the first thing. Maybe the user wants to, once the modal's open, they want to get the heck out of there. 
And now we just need to find define this closed modal function. So we're going to call the class list and we're going to remove that class of is open, which will make the the modal div hidden. And we're going to remove the event listeners for the closers. This is just the reverse of this. We're going to do just a little bit of cleanup. And then we're going to also remove that key down event listener. And the last thing we want to do is we want to take that previous active element, which was that button that we saved up here, and we want to focus the user back on that. So let's go ahead and save this. And we will refresh this page here. And I'm going to click and click. That's using the mouse. Everything works. So that's good. Now I'm tabbing, and I, I have focus on this open modal. I press Enter, and look, we're already focused on the X right there. So that's really good. And then if I tab down, I tab to name, tab to email, tab to submit, and I tab again, it goes back to the X. If I hold Shift and I tab, I go back to submit, Shift back, boom, boom, boom. So now we're just, this is called focus trapping. We've, we've trapped the user in here. There's a little bit of debate that the focus should be able to also come up to the URL here, because say, you know, like a scammy marketing website could trap the user within the modal with no way to get out. But, um, you know, we offer the user multiple ways to get out here. And if I press escape, then we're done and we're focused back on the open modal, which is really good. Oops, one thing I forgot. We want to add these um, custom attributes to our modal as well. So for the modal open button, we're going to say it's role is button. So let's grab this thing. This just is going to help screen readers understand and, and read out exactly what the purpose of this of all this is. And for the modal wrapper, roll dialog, aria modal true. So that's this one. Uh, what was it? Aria modal true. And labeled by pop up modal. I think I misspelled that, so I'm just going to do copy paste. Okay, that takes care of that. Close button is roll button. That is this one here, the link block. Let me make it visible so you can see. Make sure we get the link block. Okay, and the close area gets tab index of negative one and aria hidden equals true. Don't really need the tab index, but we'll add it anyway. Looking good, let's publish that. So that's it. Uh, thank you for checking this out. I will put the code, all this code here will be in my ultimate resource library. So the link for that will be in the description. If this video helped, please like and subscribe. Uh, this is a really, you know, it, it is some code, but you could just drop this into any project and make your modals a lot more accessible really quickly. So that's it. And thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.